Gotta go. I see it now. Yep. I see it now. It's already the one, two, three. Count it down. You see me now? Yep. There we go. I'm live. Okay. All right. Praise you. Thank you. Praise God, everybody. How you doing today? Happy Father's Day to the fathers, and I'm Pastor Bird, Lord of Harvest Christian Fellowship. We thank God today, and we wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. <clears throat> thank you, God, for waking us and being with us and watching over us, God. We just praise your name, and we just invite you into our lives and invite you to have your way and to just to teach us and train us and lead us and guide us as a true father would. Uh, and we just thank you, you know, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God to my brothers and sisters out there in computer land, through the internet. Praise you again for another awesome Sunday morning. Bible class, and today we're just going to teach a little bit on what a father is, and let's just talk about, you know, let's just kick it about it, you know, and share some things, because you know what, as it's rough being a father, it's, it's rough, and um, I just... I got a lot to share, but I don't have enough time. <laughs> so we just praise God today, man. But I think I want to start off by thanking Pastor Oz. Pastor Oz is a is a is a is a great spiritual dad. He's not my human father, but genetically, but spiritually he is. He's been, you know, for the last 14 years. My, my spiritual dad, and I thank God for him, man. I've learned so much from him, um, and uh, I just want to give him praise. I want to say uh, praise God to Pastor Jan and the rest of the leaders at Lord of the Harvest, and I just thank you, Lord, that you've kept us and watched over us and uh, that you are with us, God. So let's, 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 let's get into the word this morning. Let's get into some word. Let's see what God is saying about uh let's see what God is saying about a little about fatherhood. You know? I'm not gonna go real long. There's so many different ways I could have went, and so many different ways that I could have uh tried to go. Um, but you know, God is God is good, you know. I, I just gotta share a little testimony about myself it's easier please excuse me if you feel like wow he always sharing about himself but i don't have anything else to go by especially talking about a father you know it you know my natural father i was i was young i probably was about eight nine and um, i remember him a couple of occasions when i was younger i do remember him but um I didn't really have much time with it. I I didn't have much of a influence. I didn't have much of a teaching. I didn't have much relationship. And so I I really I really I really didn't know how to be a father. I really didn't learn it growing up what fathers are supposed to do from experience of being a child. And so you got to understand it comes a time in your life when you don't have a father. It's a blessing to have a father, people. Listen to me. It's a blessing to have a father. If he good or bad, right or wrong, you still had a father. I don't want to uh, overlook some of the things, some of the negative things our fathers have done to us. And I know some of you had some bad experiences and maybe had some negative experiences or wasn't so good. But it's still good to have one to call your own. Um, 
own because I didn't I didn't have I, I had one to call my own, but he never came around. So I just want to I just want to tell you the good part about it is is that God is a father. God is a father that knows every issue, circumstances, situation, and will help you to get yourself together if you really, really want help. If you're one that had a father that was abusive or wasn't there or was on drugs or didn't have much of a role model, God will show you how to get it together to where you can express things to him and he will share things with you as a father on how to do it because man I grew up and I got into my uh, my teens and I was angry I was very angry I was bitter um, because I, I, didn't, I didn't even know or understand what a father should really be doing but as I got a little older and I got into my late teens, I had problems with the law, getting in trouble. And that's what started my, my journey to meeting God, the real father. That's who taught me how to uh, get myself together and how to see things according to the Bible and Bible because I... I, I, you know, I just, I didn't know. And so, you know what? I know it's millions of children out here like this that just didn't know. But I'm telling you today that Jesus, Jesus has a plan. God has a plan. If it's a mother you didn't have, God can be your mother. If it's a father you didn't have or he, you had one, he was there for a while, he left. God can be your father. So let me let's let's get into the word and see what the word says. So I can just so I can kind of help you out here a little bit on how to receive the love of God, and how to receive God as your father if you don't really have anybody to be able to express that with. That's the reason why a spiritual father, your pastor. And, and, and your spiritual mother, man, it's important to have them. It's important if you're out there today, and, and I just feel the Lord just touching my heart to speak to the fatherless today, the motherless today. Find a spiritual father and mother that can help you heal, that can help you to get on the right track to um, a proper relationship with someone to where you can ask intimate questions and get good answers biblically so that you can move on and, and God can heal those wounds because it's only God that can heal, that can truly heal those wounds and help you to get past not having a father and not maybe maybe not having a mother. I know it's Father's Day, but maybe not having a mother. And uh, God can help you to get over that. So, Father, just be with us. Help us as we go into your word. Bless your sons and daughters, God. I pray for healing, God. I pray for those that are wounded. I pray that um, you help them to understand, God, that Things happen, but you are the ultimate father. You are the one that can, that has the plan, that has the energy, that has the wisdom and knowledge to straighten out their life and to help them get things together. You have to let the, the hurt and the pain, you have to let that go. You have to give that to God. Exchange your hurt and your pain for God's love, and he will share with you ways and through prayer and through fasting and through relationship with him how to let those bad feelings go and how to move on and let him be your father 
let him be the one that helps you. Let him show you through his word that he loves you and he's there for you. Father, just help us in Jesus' name. Can we go over to Ephesians chapter 6, please? Let's go over there. I want to share some things because Ephesians chapter 6 shares uh, shares the word and it, it, it gets right to the point about some of the things that we, we go through as Christians and where God wants us to line our heads up. I have some scriptures over in Proverbs we can go to. I'll, I'll go to them probably later on um, in, in, in this this Bible class. I'll touch on those if I can get to them. But let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Let's start reading in, in, in verse 1 and watch, watch what it says today. It says, <clears throat> I think I need to get there. I'm telling you to go there. I need to go there. Ephesians 6, 1. Okay, watch this, y'all. This, 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 this part of scripture was really relevant to me changing and me growing in Christ when I first got saved. This was relevant. And I'm going to use this and I'm hoping and I'm praying that it's a blessing to you this morning. Watch what it says in 1. It says, children. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and, 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 and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. I'm going to read down a little more and then we'll, we'll go back up and break it down. That it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth that's powerful four and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the lord these first four scriptures are powerful children let's go back up to the top children obey your parents in the lord see god is god is trying to get us to the place to where Especially if they're in the Lord, they're they're trying to 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 lead you as best they can. They're trying to take the word, share the word with you, impart the word to you. And I know after we grow up, and, and they're doing the best they can. And I know you see, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I know you see your dad make some mistakes. I know you see him not do everything according to the bible because he's human he's trying to learn he's trying to grow he's trying to get better in god too so you gotta you gotta give him some you have to give him some space you gotta give him a little room but the point that god is saying is he's saying obey obey according to your wisdom and knowledge Ch little children if you 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 you're younger, you're in your teens, you're coming up, try and do your best to obey and, and, and read and study for yourself to get and understand what your father is trying to relate to you, why you should be obedient. Because, man, it, 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 it's hard sometimes as a parent to share with your child what's going on. But and then other times it's easy, but sometimes man it gets the communication gets caught in between, and then it just doesn't come out right, or your child might might be hurt or might be wounded about something you said or did. You want to be careful there. You want to be real careful. You want to go to the Lord and let God let God show you how to relate to that child his word and show his word and show why his word is definitely the way that you want to go because God shows you the truth he shows you 
how to avoid obstacles. He shows you how to avoid a lot of hurt, how to avoid a lot of pain. He shows you how to avoid a lot of falling and tripping. He shows you how to avoid the lies and the deception of the enemy. That's why it says, children, obey your mother and father in the Lord because that's the right way to go. Let's read down a little bit more. <clears throat> it said, it said, let me, let me, it said, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It comes with a promise. It comes with a promise. It says you should have, it says you should have a long life and prosperity. If you obey him, this is a promise of the Lord. This is a promise. Long life and prosperity. Well, prosperity has a lot of different definitions. But God is, is, is promising you that. Amen? Watch this. Three, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live live long on the earth man it god has put some things in motion where if you obey and you have a proper your relationship properly set up with your parents that you should live long on the earth he promises that he has he's got it all set up where provision is i'm hearing in the spirit provision for you if you can get this right, if you can get it right. And then I'm also hearing, even if you you didn't have your life, you, your life was, it, it went to the left and curved a little bit and you didn't have your life right with your parents, especially with your father, go back to him. It's always, thank you, Holy Spirit, it's always time to straighten it out. Just go. Just Go and allow God to show you how to go back, how to straighten it out. I had a situation with my son when he was in his early teens. Let me take a drink. He was in his early teens. And, you know, I was separated from him. And, you know, me and his mother wasn't getting along. And, you know, I had some other stuff going on and that wasn't positive. And I got saved. Doing a departure from him, I got saved. And, and, and God really corrected me about that. He, he told me. He, he said, he said, he said, you were disconnected from your father because your father he didn't know how to be a father he didn't understand he said but you don't have to be that way he told me he said you don't have to be that way he said you have to get yourself together get your head together get your get your mind off self and think about the other children that you have in your life that needs you and um, it was a hard situation. But I went. I, I went back to my son. I got my head together. I went back to him. And I went and apologized to him. And my son, he he wasn't he, he, he wasn't sympathetic at first. He was still mad. He was kind of angry. He was disappointed. He, he didn't want to hear what was going on. And I didn't try to sugarcoat it. I just told him, man, I, you know, I was selfish and I, I, I just didn't know. But God straightened things out. I prayed, I, I left him, you know, and, and I prayed and I prayed and prayed and it's so crazy. I, I I thought he was gone. I thought he was gonna end up going in the, in, the, in the path that I did. But he got into some trouble, man. And he came and he saw me and he asked me, how, 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 
what should he do to get out? And I introduced him to Christ that day. He got saved. I prayed the prayer of salvation for him. He got saved, man, and, and powerful. I'm talking about it was just me and him. And God came down, and him and he was helping a friend at work and, and, and got caught up. And, and he caught a case, and I told him, I said, man, you get yourself saved, you get yourself right with God, God will help this case that you caught, he'll help you clear it up, and you can get yourself in church and get yourself saved and cleaned up, and God will start to put your life on the right track. And man, he got saved. Boom, join the church I was going to, and me and him start our relationship. God just started the relationship from nothing. And man, you talking about awesome. You know, some of you all at Lord Harvest, you know, you know Dion. And praise God, man. God healed our relationship, man. It wasn't easy at first. We had some run-ins and had some words, but God did it. And so I'm sharing with you that it's amazing how God can use you as a parent that's not perfect, but being with your child, just being there, supporting them, helping them, not overbearing, not, not you know, uh, not controlling, but just being there for them in a way, especially if they're grown already, you have to let go. Oh, praise God. You have to let go. You have to let them. If they're 18, 19, and 20, you have to let go. You have to let them. You can steer them right, but you have to let go, and you have to let God. Amen. Let me finish sharing in the scripture what it says. It says, that it may be it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. <clears throat> I got a couple couple side notes right here I wrote down. If 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 you're a Christian or not, if you saved or not, God desires us to obey our parents' instructions. It, it, he didn't say. Only if you saved. He said, obey your parents. He said, obey them. And see, we got to understand. It's our job to try to teach them and lead them in the right direction. And after that, our hands are off. We can't make them. Amen. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, break down honor. Honor is to have inward respect and reverence for it's inward see inward inward the inward respect is a is a reverence and love to say i'm going to obey and i'm going to follow these instructions because you're my you're my parent because i know you've been through some things that i haven't been through i know you're not going to tell me wrong I know you want to lead me and guide me in love to do the right things and to have a better and stronger life with God than you. Everybody's desire to save this act. But for those that's not saved, they just, they want the best for you. They really want the best for you. And, and it's that inward respect and reverence for your parents that God uses this word honor to describe, amen? It's, it's not just a, a outward, but respect and honor them inwardly. Plus, God adds the promise with your obedience, ensuring long life and prosperity. The only thing you can do here is try God out. If, let me say this again. God says his word and God he, 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 he he's provoked to move on his word especially when he promises something ensuring long life 
and prosperity, he's going to back that word up. But let allow him get into prayer. Allow God to show you how to rectify your broken relationship. Sometimes you got to let go of the things that has happened. You know, you call dad today, or if you know where dad is, give dad a second chance. Oh, praise God. Give him a second chance. Sometimes that time apart, God opens his eyes just like he probably opened yours. And you go back and don't try to put any pressure on them. Go, go back and just say, hey, man, can we try it again? You're my dad. You wasn't there. I'm hurt. I'm wounded. But maybe we can start over. Maybe it's been a few months. Maybe it's been a couple years. Maybe it's been a long time. But start all over again. I hear God saying, start all over again. Especially if you save, you got to forgive them. You got to, you got to, you have to let it go to heal. And I, I praise God for this. I couldn't tell you if I hadn't been through it. And I cried many a days about it. I, I, I was wounded. I had nobody to turn to. My mother remarried. God was my stepfather. Second strike. My real dad wasn't there. Stepdad, he was there, but he didn't try to share anything good with me. He, 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 man, he was just a bad influence. And um, we didn't get along. I scratched that. And that made me that much, much more angrier. But if you go back and try to straighten things out, God will help you. Amen. He'll help you to get it together to where you can open up some doors, man. And, and God will slowly and surely heal you together, especially when he see you. Especially if you're the one that's saved and he see you trying to reach out and do the right thing, God will give you, he'll give it to you if you pray and you meditate and you ask God and you you really, really pray and pour out your heart to God for help. God will do it. Amen? Now watch this. It's some things that God gives us as fathers not to do. He wants us to be a good example. And he wants us to be able to share and he wants us to be able to say some things that help that help you be able to see Life from a different angle. And I just want to, I'm going to stroll over here to Proverbs. Watch this. Watch what, watch, watch, watch what, watch what he says here. In, in 3 1. My son, forget not my law. But let thine word, let thine heart keep my commandments. That's th that's three. Two, 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 one. Chapter two, verse one. My son, if I will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Listen to what he's saying. It's important to listen to the instructions of a father. And Proverbs is Proverbs is really how I got my head together. How I started to see, wait a minute, bro. You need a father. You need some help. You need some strength. Even though I couldn't go back, my real father died. And then my stepfather, he moved 
out of town and I lost I lost contact with him. So I had to depend on God. The only one I could depend on was God. And that was the best decision I made. Fathers is, is such an important part of your life because they can they can identify with where you with where you are, with what you're going through. And they can give you such wisdom and knowledge on how to attack things that's going on in your life and how to respond to things that's going on in your life and how to deal with people in situations and circumstances. Amen? Four. Watch this, 4.1. Hear, ye children, the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. Amen? See, that's it. In, in, in Christ, Christ will teach you instructions and he's going to give you understanding with it. Amen? It, it's powerful. It, it really is. It's, it's nothing like having a dad. It's nothing like having a father. It's, it's powerful. I had to get mine from Christ. I, I, I didn't have that natural, you know, but the one thing I can I can stress about my spiritual dad, Ozzy, is, man, he, he's there. I can call eyes up, and I, I know, I know I get on his nerves. <laughs> hey, man, it, it's, I know I get on his nerves, but God, I thank you. I can call him and say, Oz, this scripture, or Oz, man, What's what's going on with me and what's going on with me and Sonny? What is about what about Dion? This and that and other. Man, he's dead. I thank God for that. You know, I, I, I really thank God for him giving me instructions, man, and, and, and giving me understanding because he's already raised four four children. And got a great relationship with his children now. And so it's a, it's powerful. It's powerful that I can call him up. And then another thing on top of that, Pastor Oz has linked me up with another guy, Pastor Taylor Cox. And I can call him. I said, man, call him, you know, and I can call him up and I can get some answers. It's, it's, it's amazing how God will put people in your life to help you out. They're not, my, they're not my biological father, but you know what? I know they're going to give me the biblical answers. They're going to give me the biblical wisdom. They're going to give me the wisdom that God would want me to have on how to handle some situations. And amen, it's powerful. And I want to share that with you. That's the thing you got. That's the thing you get in God. You, man, you can get so much knowledge. In having a spiritual dad, a solid A1 spiritual dad. I ain't talking about somebody just trying to fake and shake and trying to trying to get there. I'm talking about somebody that's been in ministry years and have raised a family and got a wife and can tell you, tell you all kind of little things to go with. Amen. Let me let me let me see. I got one more, I think. Five one. My son. Proverbs five one. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thy, bow, bow thy ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips will keep knowledge. It's powerful. It's powerful. Amen? And so I'm just sharing with you that, that aspect of it. Just a little something today, just to say, hey, if your relationship is not right, go back. Pray and ask God for the courage and for the wisdom to go straighten that out. If you're a father and you see you made a mistake and you're watching this, 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 this class now, pray about it. Ask God to show you where you've made some mistakes. An apology will set you free and oh god i hear it in the spirit an apology will set you free apologize to your children go and straighten it out man 
because the hurts and the wounds, man, they go deep and, and they stop us from being able to move forward and stop us from being who we are in Christ. Man, God, I didn't know you was going to go this way with me. I did not know, but I praise you for your wisdom and knowledge. It's somebody out there now. I feel it. I, I sense it in the spirit. God, just ask your child for forgiveness. Just ask him to forgive you. Just son, son or daughter, just go to your father. Ask. Say, hey man, let's straighten this out. I need you in my life. I need some help. I, I just need a father. I need a friend. Just go to him in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord God, that you will move on hearts today. Move right now in Jesus' name on the father's heart, on the son's heart, on the daughter's heart, and touch them. The, oh, God, this class is there for your children. Let it be a blessing that comes out of it today, Father God. Let them be able to find them. Let them be able to go and let them be able to straighten things out in Jesus' name. I only got a few more minutes, y'all. But let me share with you one more scripture. Chapter, I want to go back to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Now I'm going to read some things I wrote down. It's not a lot. But I want to I want to delve into this verse 4 a little bit more. And I pr I'm praying, man. I'm really praying. Father God, I'm praying for those who are watching this, this class, this broadcast right now. Father God, bless them. Bless them. It's nothing like having a father, man. It's nothing like having somebody to lean on. It's nothing like having somebody to go to. It's nothing like having somebody to talk to. It's nothing like it. You know, I didn't have a, I, I, I didn't have it biologically where I wish I could have talked to my dad, but I got it spiritually, and I got a dad I can talk to that does not hesitate to give me biblically and what he thinks is the truth, and he gives me the room to make the decision on how to do it. And I just want to say today, as we read verse four. I want you to keep an open mind here and watch what he's saying. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, to anger, or frustration, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in the nurture. Nurture is to cover them, to help them, to say comforting things to them to be there for them sometimes just to hear them out sometimes just listening not giving your opinion is is a powerful thing sometimes just letting them you know let let it go sometimes just letting them exhale you know sometimes i have to let my daughter exhale she just be like, well, dad, this. I'm like, I understand, but you have a choice to make. She's 18, you know? And I'm like, you got a choice to make. It's time for you to start learning how to be an adult and make adults and sisters. And she'll tell me, well, I, I feel the Holy Spirit. I'm like, well, that's the way. I can't tell you what the Holy Spirit wants you to know. You have to figure it out between you and you and God's relationship. And it's powerful to be able to do that. But let me let me let me let me share this last instance here about what the Lord is saying. It's, it says, provoke. 
not your children. You don't be the one to force your children to think about negative things. You don't force them by injustice. You don't provoke them by losing your temper when you're talking to them. This is not my word. This word comes right out of my Bible. It was in a footnote. Don't lose your temper. Don't don't release or spout out in anger. Don't put undue severity on them. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, man, what they come and ask or something that they may say, your answer, it, it may just be too much. You know, it they okay what they did was wrong but everything doesn't warrant a harsh answer or yelling or being nasty you gotta have a heart you gotta have a heart of love when dealing with our children amen Cruelty. Don't don't be cruel. God, that's what provoking not your kids. That's what it means. Don't be cruel. Some some of us as parents, man, we can be real cruel. If it's not you, amen. Praise God. But I'm just I'm, I'm speaking through the spirit for those that that are. And try to sit with God and try to get that together. Favoritism. Favoritism is is is, is bad. That's a bad one there. You got three or four children, and it's one or two that you favorite, and, and, and the other ones, God is saying no. Favoritism creates a wound that's, that runs deep. That runs deep. Suppression. To suppress feelings and suppress uh, 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 being loving, hugging. Dads, I know. I know. It's it's tough. It's tough, Dads. Hey, man, I came out. I asked God for some things. I came out. I'm a hugger, man. I'm a hugger. You know, and then one time I, I had I made friends with a guy, and this guy was, was a, a hugger and a kiss. I used to be like, hey, man. Hey, man, no. But do you know what? God used him. To, to, to help me to lower my guard down and it opened me up to hug and to get my, you know, I, I sometimes peck my son on the cheek or, you know what I'm saying? I always kiss my daughters on their forehead or something, man. Man, that's powerful. That's powerful. A hug, a kiss, to say I love you is powerful. You got to do it. Dads, you got to do it. Amen? You got to do it. Okay, I know I'm getting down down to my minutes. Sarcasm? No. You don't. Sarcasm is man. Those, sarcas those sar sarcastic innuendos that we can throw out, man, that, that hurts. That brings on hurts and wounds, and may, it just makes things worse. These are things that the Spirit showed me in my study Bible that we don't, we don't, we don't, God want us to not use those things. That's provoking your children to be angry or the, or the frustration or the wounds. This is the big one. This last one here. And it says, don't misuse or abuse your authority. Dads, in the name of Jesus, I want to say, don't misuse or abuse your authority. 
We all need help in some area. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm not, I'm not perfect by far. But I thank God for what he's done with me with my children. But, but to misuse or abuse your authority, man, that's a tough one. But God has the power. He has the ability to help us, to straighten us out, to guide us through his word. Over in Proverbs, you know, he shows us in John, in Mark, in Matthew, what a father is supposed to be like. Is, is it, cap are we capable of being like Jesus or being like God? Maybe. It's a matter of how obedient you be. But God is the ultimate. That's always going to be over our head to keep striving for, to keep pushing for, to keep growing for, to be like him. Amen? So don't misuse your authority or take it and just not do the right thing with it. Amen? So let me say to this. This is the last thing I want to say. God, thank you for Father's Day. You know, I know Mother's Day, it seems to be a bigger event. But Father's Day should be just as big as Mother's Day is. Yeah, I know, Mom. She had the baby. She carried the baby. She nurtured the baby. She nurtured us as children. But the father is the authority figure. He's the figure to help lead and guide, to help be a provider and to be there. And I just want to stop and say, Father, show us and lead us and guide us according to what you have for our lives how you want us to be, but show us your love, instill in us your wisdom and your knowledge to love according to your ways and to be more like you. Help us, Jesus, as I in this class, help us, Jesus, in every way that you possibly can to get better and to grow stronger and to be a, a better father naturally and spiritually in Jesus name. I thank you Lord God and I praise you Lord God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a good day y'all. Happy Father's Day. Praise God.